We are very clear that, uh, that Russia should not invade the sovereignty of Ukraine, that we must stand up and we are standing up for its territorial integrity. We are working with our allies in that regard and we've been very clear that we are prepared to issue sanctions like you've not seen before. Vice President Harris with a warning to Russia over a potential invasion of Ukraine. This as the world marks the 30th anniversary of the Soviet Union's collapse and Russian President Vladimir Putin continuing, though, to glorify that era. Let's discuss with CNN Global Affairs Analyst Susan Glasser. Susan, great to see you. Susan, one of the mysteries of, of this shift inside Russia is that millions of Russians were killed under the communist regime, especially under Stalin. And yet Putin said the collapse of the Soviet empire was a great tragedy. And now he's been bumping up this Soviet nostalgia. What does he hope to gain? from reviving some of the ghosts of the old Soviet Union. You know, this is uh, really, I think, a, a central thing to understand about Vladimir Putin's two-decade leadership of Russia is that Soviet uh, nostalgia, as you called it, John, is, is, is at the core of his appeal as a politician, uh, a sense of grievance. Uh, you know, he was actually all about making Russia great again uh, long before Donald Trump was talking about making America great again by looking backwards. Uh, it was back in 2005, in fact, that Vladimir Putin said the breakup of the Soviet Union was the greatest, not just a great tragedy, but the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. Never mind World War II, never mind uh, the Gulag, never mind World War I. Uh, he's continued that just this week, in fact. He called it a historical tragedy. And he's all about essentially trying to revise and to get rid of the international uh, order that was constructed on the collapse of the Soviet Union. Well, and that certainly is the danger. And I understand we're joined now by Ann Applebaum from The Atlantic, herself an esteemed author of books on many things Soviet and defense of the democracy related. Uh, and what do you make of this Soviet nostalgia articulated by Vladimir Putin? What does it say about his ambitions on the Ukraine? And do you think the Biden administration's pushback has been strong enough to deter him to date? So to be very clear and to echo Susan, it's extremely dangerous, the language that he uses, and he has been using it for some time, um, because, of course, there's no logical reason why Russia should invade Ukraine. Ukraine does not threaten Russia. NATO does not threaten Russia. NATO is a defensive alliance. Um, everybody who works in the Russian military knows that. Um, and so Putin is using this language of the past, of threat, of the Cold War, as an excuse to prepare his people perhaps for an invasion or perhaps for another set of games around that. Um, and for him, this is a justification. Uh, it explains, both it explains why he should still be president. Um, he's somebody who is um, you know, famously corrupt. Most of the population now knows that. Um, his popularity has been declining rapidly. Um, living standards in his country have been going down. Um, so why should he, by what right, by what legitimacy does mm. he remain in power? And his argument is that because I'm the one who's going to put the Soviet Union back together again, and that's why it's dangerous. Um, the, the Biden administration has done one very good thing, which is that they began raising the alarm about this problem, about the potential, the pen, potential for a Russian invasion of Ukraine several weeks ago. Um, and they have alarmed European allies. They have people aware of what's going on. They have people in Ukraine aware. They seem to have a lot of intelligence about what's going on. Um, and that's really important. Of course, what we have not done, um, and this is not the Biden administration's fault, but it goes back eight years now, um, certainly to the Trump administration, which played all kinds of games with, uh, as you will remember, with Ukrainian uh, military aid. Uh, we have not made an enormous effort to, to, to militarize Ukraine, to support Ukraine mm. in such a way that it would make even the idea of invasion impossible or unthinkable. Um, and that's a mistake the U.S. and others in Europe have made uh, going back, you know, nearly a decade now. And, and, and Susan, that really gets to what went wrong in the 30 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union. You're co-author of an excellent book on former Secretary of State James Baker with your husband. Um, and, and I wonder, in your research and interviews for that book, what Baker feels went wrong, what you believe went wrong where we, we lost this opportunity uh, and instead have fallen back to some of these Cold War divides and rhetoric. 
Well, I think I think Baker, the former Secretary of State at the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union, his argument would be that actually a lot went right in the sense that it was a largely peaceful and sure. Uh, sure. and empires collapsing is probably one of the most dangerous uh, geopolitical moments. Uh, wars uh, of many different varieties were possibility at that time. A few did break out. And I think, you know, the imperative of the United States at that time under George H.W. Bush and Baker was essentially to hit a, as soft of a landing as possible to ensure that there wasn't, uh, you know, a cataclysm that resulted from this incredible moment of instability in the world order. They reconstructed, they essentially patched together the post-World War II institutions uh, for a new era. And now we've seen the unraveling of that, uh, largely aided and abetted by Vladimir Putin. Putin is in a much stronger position than he was two decades ago when he came into power uh, in the sense we built the Russian military. And it's not theoretical that we're talking about can Vladimir Putin invade Ukraine because he already did so in 2014. And so what's striking to me is that the need that he has felt to manufacture this crisis. I just can't underscore that enough. There is no imminent threat of NATO expanding into Ukraine, as he claims. Ukraine is not any closer, really, to joining NATO today than it was in 2014 when Putin invaded it the first time and took over the Crimean Peninsula and illegally. Yeah. So that's a very important point for people to understand. It is. And and I wish we could keep talking about this. And you've written so much about kleptocracies and the money laundering side of, of, uh, of, of these autocrats. But we're going to have to leave it here for now. Susan Glasser and Ann Applebaum, thank you very much.